क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी फाइव इफ ए एक्स स्क्वायर माइनस थर्टी फोर एक्स वाई माइनस फाइव वाई स्क्वायर प्लस टू एक्स प्लस ट्वेंटी सिक्स वाई माइनस फाइव इज इक्वल टू जीरो रिप्रेजेंट अ पेयर ऑफ स्ट्रेट लाइन देन द वैल्यू ऑफ ए इज फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज अ जनरल इक्वेशन फॉर द पेयर ऑफ स्ट्रेट लाइन्स जनरल इक्वेशन फॉर द पेयर ऑफ स्ट्रेट lines is given by a x square plus b y square plus 2 h x y plus 2 g x plus 2 f y plus c is equal to 0 and we are given this equation which is a x square minus 34 x y minus 5 y square plus 2 x Plus twenty six y minus five is equal to zero. So when uh, uh, see comparing all the coefficients of the given variables, comparing coefficients, you will get the value of all. Like a is represented by a only over here, and the value of b is minus five, c is minus five. And uh, h, it is half of the coefficient of x y, which comes out to be minus seventeen. Then you have f, which is equal to half of the coefficient of y, which is thirteen, and uh, you are left with g. Okay, g is the half of the coefficient of x, which is equal to one. So these are the values of the given variables. Now the condition for the straight lines. Condition for the straight lines is abc plus 2 fgh minus af square minus bg square minus ch square is equal to 0 so now let's fill in the values a is a b is minus 5 c is minus 5 plus 2 f is 13 G is one and H is minus seventeen minus A F is thirteen. Uh, yeah. So thirteen square minus B is minus five. G is one square minus C is minus five and H is minus seventeen square. This is equal to zero. This is the condition for the straight lines, right? This makes twenty five A minus. Two into thirteen into seventeen, it gives you. Okay, just let's calculate two into thirteen into seventeen. It gives you plus, not plus, minus twenty-five a minus four hundred forty-two a. Then minus one hundred sixty-nine a plus five. Then you have seventeen square. Okay, let's seventeen square multiply five. It gives you. Hmm. Yeah. This will be one four four five. This should be equal to zero. Sorry, here was no a. I just wrote it by mistake. So this gives you one sixty nine minus twenty uh, five. This gives you one forty four a is equal to minus one forty four a. Is equal to I'll take everything on this side one hundred for this minus five plus four four two. This makes this is equal to minus one four five zero plus four four two. This is equal to minus one forty four a. So a becomes equal to minus one thousand eight divided by minus one hundred forty four, which gives you. Just a minute. Let me divide. Yeah, this gives you seven. So the value of a is equal to seven. This is the answer to our question option A. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question number forty six now. So this question says the equation of the lines perpendicular to this line and passing through two comma one is. Now the given equation of the straight lines is x square minus five x y plus four y square is equal to zero. 
let's split it out so you can write it as x square minus x y minus 4 x y plus 4 y square is equal to 0 let's take x common x minus y minus 4 y so here i'll have x minus y again so the two equations for which we are talking about the pair of straight lines so the two equations for the two pair of straight lines is first is x minus 4y is equal to 0 and the second one is x minus y is equal to 0. Right. Now, what is the slope of it? Slope of this is equal to, um, this will be 1 by 4. Yeah. And what will be the slope in this case? It will be 1. Right. I hope you know this. Right. This can be written as uh, y is equal to x upon 4 so the slope is 1 by 4 over here i can say x is equal to y so the slope is 1 so now if we are talking about the lines which are perpendicular to this so slope of the perpendicular line slope of perpendicular it will be minus 4 and over here slope of perpendicular it will be equal to minus 1. Correct? Now, one more thing it is said you, the equation of the lines perpendicular to this and passing through 2 comma 1. So, over here, point of passing 2 comma 1 and the same with the another one. Point of passing is 2 comma 1. So now using these two things, what the equation will be for the first pair of lines, it will be, uh, see, it will be y minus y1 is equal to minus 4x minus x1. So y minus 1 is equal to minus 4 plus 8, which gives you 4x plus y is equal to 9. Or you can say 4x plus y minus 9 is equal to 0. Similarly, over here, I can say y minus 1 is equal to minus 1, x minus 2, which will give you y minus 1 is equal to minus x plus 2. So, x plus y minus 3 is equal to 0 is the second pair equation of the line. We got the two equations of the lines which are perpendicular to the given equation of the lines. Right? So, Equation of pair of perpendicular lines is four x plus y minus nine into x plus y minus three is equal to zero, which upon solving you will give you four x square plus five x y plus y square minus 21x minus 12y plus 27 is equal to 0. So, let's check with the options. Okay, option D is the correct answer. Hope this is clear to you. Let's move to the next question. Question number 47. The straight line touching this circle and remaining normal to this circle is which of these following equations? So, first of all, let's pick up this circle. x square plus y square minus 4y minus 6 is equal to 0. So, now what is the center of this circle? It's given by minus g minus f. What is g? It is a coefficient of x, half the coefficient of x and f is half the coefficient of y. So, according to this, what is the coefficient of x? There is no x variable present in this equation. So, g is 0 and half the coefficient of y. The coefficient of y is minus 2. Half the coefficient of y is minus 2. So, minus of f will give you 2. This is the center of the circle. Correct? Hope this is clear. So, the center of the circle is at 0, 2. Now, it says that uh, the given straight line touches this circle and is normal to this circle. So, if this line is normal to this circle, therefore, the line 
passes through 0 comma 2. So if this line passes through 0 comma 2, next let's suppose the slope. Let's let the slope of the line is equal to m. Now let's frame an equation. The line is passing through this point. The slope of the line is m. So the equation will be given by y minus 2 is equal to m into x minus 0, which will give you y is equal to um, y is equal to mx plus 2. Or you can say mx minus y plus 2 is equal to 0. This is the equation of the line with respect to the circle. Now we are done with one part of this question. Second, it says the straight line is touching this circle when this line is touching the circle touching that means it's tangent right so the given line or not the given line the required line the required line is tangent to x square plus y square minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. Let's make this line. So here's the circle. Right. This given line is tangent to the circle. The equation of the circle is x squared plus y squared minus 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. And this line is mx minus y plus 2 is equal to 0. What is the center of the circle? You know the center is given by we just talked about the center is given by minus g minus f. What is g? Half the coefficient of x which is equal to 1 minus of g. Uh, it is equal to minus 1 actually. So minus of g will give you 1. Okay. Minus of minus 1 will give you 1. And uh, the coefficient of y, y variable is absent in this equation. So f is going to be 0. This is the center of this circle. 1 comma 0. Right. What is the radius of the circle now? Radius is given by g square plus f square minus c. So what is g? We just calculated g is equal to 1. f is 0 minus of minus 3. What is c? It is equal to minus 3. So this is going to give me 4 root and the radius is equal to 2. Okay. Radius is length. So I'll take the positive value of it. So radius is equal to 2. This is the center and this is the radius. So this length is equal to Two. I hope this is clear to you. All right. So the next thing, mm, let this point be P and this point be O. So you know O P length. You are you know this equation equation of this line and you know this point. So what is point line distance formula? Point line distance formula. What is that? It's given by the modulus of ax1 plus by1 plus c whole divided by a square plus b square root. What is a? It is the coefficient of x of the given equation which is m in this case. So let's write down here a is equal to m and uh, b is the coefficient of y, which in this case is equal to minus 1. Right? And, uh, wait a minute. Yeah. And c is 2. Right? This is clear to you. So, let's fill in this. And x, y, 1, y, 1 are the these two x y coordinates so x1 is equal to 1 and y1 is equal to 0 in this case now let's fill in the value so the op distance will be given by that is 2 actually op is equal to 2 so op is equal to 2 is equal to a is m x1 is 1 plus b is minus 1 y1 is 0 plus c c is equal to minus uh, yeah c is equal to 2 we just wrote c is equal to 2 whole divided by m square plus minus 1 square. So 2 is equal to 
m plus 2 whole divided by root of 1 plus m square. Correct? Let's do the squaring both the sides. You will get uh, this as 4 is equal to m plus 2 whole square divided by 1 plus m square. Which will give you 4 1 plus m square is equal to m plus 2 square. Let's open this up. So you will have 4 plus 4 m square is equal to m square plus 4 plus uh, 8m. So this 4 and this 4 will get cancelled and uh, wait. Mm, yeah. So over here, wait a minute. It is not 4m, it, uh, 8m, it's 4m. Yeah. So now you are going to have 3m square is equal to 4m or 3m square minus 4m is equal to 0. I'll take the m common. 3m minus 4 is equal to 0 or you can say m is equal to 0 or 3m minus 4 is equal to 0. From here I will get m is equal to 0 or m is equal to 4 by 3. This is the value of the m. Correct? Hope this is clear till here. Now we got the value of the m. Let's make that equation. It was equal to mx plus minus y plus 2 is equal to 0. So equation mx minus y plus 2 is equal to 0. So m can't be 0. The slope can't be 0. I'm taking the m as 4 by 3. So 4 by 3 x minus y plus 2 is equal to 0 which gives you 4 x minus 3 y plus 6 is equal to 0. This is the required equation of the line. Let's check with the options. Here it is. I have option A as my answer. Hope this is clear to you. Now let's move to the next question number 48. The ratio of the areas of the greatest and the smallest circle touching this line. Okay, touching these circles is which of these lines? So let's make first of all, let's try and make a figure for it. Here we go. So this is the okay. Just give me a minute. Let's make it okay. So here you have the circle. This is the coordinate axis. I have the four circles. See the ratio of the area of the greatest and the smallest circle. Before making out the figure of it, let's understand it first. So this equation can be this equation can become x plus 1 square plus y plus 1 square is equal to 1. So you have a plus minus and a plus minus over here. So the first possible equation is this. If this is the equation, the second one can be x plus 1 whole square and this x minus 1 whole square is equal to 1. Then you can have x minus 1 whole square plus y plus 1 whole square is equal to 1. Or x minus 1 whole square plus y minus 1 whole square is equal to 1. These are the four possible equations for the circle. So if this is the circle, then according to here, what will be the center? It will be minus 1, minus 1. Right? Minus 1, minus 1. From here, the center will be minus 1, 1. For this one, the center will be 1 minus 1 and in this case the center will be 1 1. Hope this is clear. So now let's draw the circles. What are the possible ones? So minus 1 minus 1 that means this circle is lying in this quadrant. The third one. Right here the center is minus 1 minus 1. Then minus 1 plus 1. That means this circle is lying in the second quadrant. This is the 1, minus 1, 1. Now, 1, minus 1. So, here is a third circle with this center. 1, minus 1. And this is the last circle with the center coordinates as 1, comma 1. Okay. Hope this is clear till here. So, now, the question is, 
the ratio of the area of the greatest and the smallest circle touching the circle. So what is the great smallest circle first? This is the smallest circle which is touching all these circles and this is the largest circle which is touching all these circles. Let's make it. Okay, so we have made. Right. Now I can say let R be the radius of smaller circle and capital R be the radius of the greatest circle, smallest circle and the greatest circle. Right. So now if I look at the lines, look at the length of it. So what you can say if I'm taking these points as uh, A and okay, let's take it as A dash B dash. So what can be the length of A dash B dash? See the coordinates of A are 1 comma 1 and B dash are minus 1 comma minus 1. So the distance between them can be written as 1 plus 1 square plus 1 plus 1 square which gives you 2 square plus 2 square that is equal to 4 plus 4 that is equal to root of 8. Or this is equal to 2 root 2. Now, this is the length of AB. Right? If I am taking this point, if it is uh, okay with you, you are able to get this point as A and this point as B. What will be the length of AB? So, AB, this can be written as 2 root 2 minus 1 minus 1. Now how is this one possible? See A dash A is actually the radius of this circle which is equal to 1. Similarly B dash B is the radius of this circle which is again equal to 1. So whole A dash B dash minus radius of both circles will give you the diameter of this smaller circle which will be equal to 2 root 2 minus 2 that will be equal to 2 root 2 minus 1 okay so this is the diameter ab is the diameter of smallest circle so if this is the diameter of the smallest circle what will be the radius of the smaller circle it will be given by this whole divided by 2 this whole thing divided by 2 so, this is equal to minus, sorry, this will be equal to root 2 minus 1. This is the radius of the smallest circle. So, now let's similarly find out the radius of the biggest circle. So, what will be the biggest circle now? If I am taking these points as uh, uh, just let it be J and K. So, what will be the length of JK? JK will be A dash B dash length plus 1, plus 1. Why is that? See, this is again the diameter of the circle. Sorry, radius of the bigger circle. Not the bigger, sorry. The radius of this circle and the radius of this circle, which is equal to 1. So, JK can be written as A dash B dash, which was equal to 2 root 2 minus 1 plus 2, which will give you, uh, let's open this up, 2 root 2 minus 2 yes okay so this will be equal to uh, plus 2 which will be equal to 2 root 2 right and uh, just let's solve this in it a dash b dash sorry a dash b dash was equal to 2 root 2 that is what i was doing wrong so 2 root 2 this will not be there. Plus 2. I will take 2 common root 2 plus 1. This is the diameter of biggest circle. What will be the radius of the biggest circle? It will be half of this which will be given by root 2 plus 1. This is the radius of the biggest circle. Now what do you have to find out in the question? You have to find out the ratio of the areas of greatest and the smallest circle. So ratio 
of areas of biggest to smallest circle. This is given by root 2 plus 1 upon root 2 minus 1 pi r square. Pi pi will get cancelled and you will have this upon root 2 minus 1 square which on solving open this up this will be a square plus b square plus 2 a b a square plus b square minus 2 a b this is 3 plus 2 root 2 and 3 minus 2 root 2 let's check with the options here we have option c is the correct answer hope you are clear with this let's move to the next question number 49 the equation of the circle with center 2 comma minus 3 and touching the x axis is. Let's make this circle first. So here is the coordinate axis. 2 comma minus 3 will lie in the fourth quadrant. So here is approximately 2 and over here I can consider as minus 3. So this is the radius, sorry, this is the center of the circle which is 2 comma minus 3 and it is touching the x-axis. So let's make this circle something like this. Okay, I'm making it. Uh, let's make this as, I'm not up to the scale in this figure. So what do you can say about the radius of the circle? This is equal to 3 units because the distance of the x-axis from 2 comma minus 3 is, sorry, distance of the y-axis, no, sorry, the distance of the x-axis from this given point is 3 units. So this is the radius of the circle, right? Center is given by 2 comma minus 3 and the radius is 3 units. What do you have to find out? You have to find out the equation of the circle and you know the formula for that. This will be given by x minus 2 square plus y minus of minus 3 square is equal to radius square which is equal to 3 square. So x minus 2 square plus y plus 3 square is equal to 9 which gives me x square plus 4 minus 4x plus y square plus 9 plus 6y is equal to 9. So they will cancel out and you will have x square plus y square minus 4x plus 6y plus 4 is equal to 0. This is the required equation of the circle and option C is the correct answer. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question number 50. In a square A, B, C, D of side of length A, suppose A, B and A, D are along the coordinate axis. Let's make this first. So here is the coordinate axis. This is the coordinate axis. And this is the one. This is the coordinate axis. Next is saying you A, B, C, D is of the side length A. A, B and A, D are on the coordinate axis. So that means A is over here. And uh, let's assume B is over here and D is over here, right? So this is A, this is A, which makes a, a chord, B coordinates as A comma 0 and the D coordinates as 0 comma A. Similarly, you can have the point C over here somewhere. So this coordinates of C will be A comma A. I hope this is clear to you, right? Now, next, then the circle that circumscribes the square is. So, the circle which circumscribes the square is. Yeah. So, this is going to be like this. This is the circle which is circumscribing this square. So, what about the diameter of the circle? Diameter of circle is equal to BD and what is BD? This will be given by root of 
a minus 0 square plus 0 minus a square which will be equal to a square plus a square which will give you 2 a square or a root 2. This is the diameter of the circle. Right. And uh, what about the radius of the circle? It will be given by a root 2 upon this which will be a upon root 2. So using this now you can find out uh, uh, see the center see this will be actually a bit of lengthy process because then you have to calculate the center point uh, by calculating the midpoint of BD and then you have to use the whole formula or you can simply say this as also the center of the circle equation the easier one can be done this way also circle equation will be x minus 0 into x plus a minus sorry x minus 0 into x minus a plus y minus a into y minus 0 is equal to 0 because we have the two coordinates as these so x minus 0 uh, into x minus a plus y minus a into y minus 0 is equal to 0 so this will give you x into x minus a plus y into y minus a is equal to 0. x square minus ax plus y square minus ay is equal to 0 which gives you x square plus y square minus ax plus y is equal to 0. This is the required equation of the circle. Let's check with the options. Option D is the correct answer to the question. Hope you are clear with this. Let's revise this question. First of all, we drew the figure of the, the given problem on the coordinate axis. After that, BD was the diameter of the circle. And from there, you can calculate the radius. But in that process, then you have to calculate the midpoint. And that would have been a lengthy process. The easier one approach could have been, you can say, or you could have gone for the circle equation simply x minus 0 into x minus a plus y minus a into y minus 0 is equal to 0. And then solving this whole thing, you will get the equation of the circle as x square plus y square minus a into x plus y is equal to 0. So I hope you are clear with this. Next is question number 51. Suppose A, 2 comma 3 and B are the points of intersection of the two circles. Okay, uh, we'll make the figure side by side. So first of all, you are having two circles. All right. Now it's going telling you A 2 comma 3. So this is point A. The coordinates are 2 comma 3. There is another point B. They are the point of intersection of the two circles. The point P is lying on one circle. So here is a point P. And Q is lying on another circle. So here is point Q. Mm, let's say it over here. Now such that BP and BQ constitutes the diameter of the circles. That means over here BP and BQ. So okay. So BP and BQ they are the diameter of the circles. And next it's saying you in the slope of the radical axis and PQ are 3 comma 3 by 4 and A by B respectively, then the value of 3A plus 4B is. So the very first thing, if this is the center, this is the center of the circle and I join this. Okay, now let's uh, say this as C1, center of the circle and C2 is the center of this circle. Now, according to the question, B C1 is equal to C1 P, both are radius of first circle. Similarly, B C2 is equal to C2 Q. Again, the radius of the second circle. Correct? Now, let's consider this triangle B P Q in triangle B P Q. C1 C2 divides side B P and B Q in the same ratio. 
right? C1 and C2, they are dividing both the sides, VP and VQ, they are in the same ratio. That is half is to half. Therefore, PQ stands to be parallel to C1, C2. This line. Wait. Actually, the scale is not up to the mark. So, you can say C1, C2 is parallel to P, PQ. Uh, yeah. See why they are parallel according to the basic proportionality theorem. If this line is uh, C1 and C2, they are dividing the lines in the same ratio, then C1, C2 stands parallel to PQ. Right. So if I'm joining a B also now, the next thing. PQ, this employs PQ is par perpendicular to a B. Right. I hope this is clear to you till here. Now, next thing as the line a B. Is also the radical axis. Therefore, product of slopes of PQ and AB because they are perpendicular to each other. The product of their slopes is equal to minus 1. What is the slope of PQ? It is given to you in the question. It is, uh, sorry, uh, radical axis. AB is 3 by, 3 by 4 and PQ slope is A upon B. So, PQ slope is A upon B and the radical axis, that's AB slope is 3 by 4, is equal to minus 1, which gives you 3A is equal to minus 4P or 3A plus 4B is equal to 0. And this is what we had to find out in the question, right? 3A plus 4B value and this value is equal to 0. Option B. Hope you're clear with this. Let's move to the next question, number 52. If the directrix of the parabola x square plus y, uh, 4y minus 6x plus lambda is equal to 0 and y plus 1 is equal to 0, then which of the following is true? So in this question, you are given x square plus 4y minus 6x plus lambda is equal to 0. First thing, okay. If from here you can say x square minus 6x is equal to 4y minus lambda. Right? So x square minus 6x plus 9 because I have to complete the square on this side minus 4y minus lambda plus 9. This will give me x minus 3 square. I'll do this one. So I'll take minus common from here. This will be 4y plus lambda minus 9. This is equal to minus. I'll take the 4 common. So you will have y plus lambda minus 9. Lambda minus 9 upon 4. So this is the equation C. x minus 3 whole square is equal to minus 4y plus lambda minus 9 upon 4. That gives you x square is equal to 4y, the capital one, right? So from here, what is the equation of directrix? Directrix is y is equal to 1. And what is y? This is equal to y plus lambda minus 9 upon 4 is equal to 1. So from here, let's calculate the value of y. You will have 1 minus lambda minus 9 upon 4, which will give you 4 minus lambda plus 9 upon 4, which will be equal to 13 minus lambda upon 4 is equal to y. So this is the value, right? Now, according to the problem, Over here, give me a minute. Okay, so given the equation of the directrix is y plus 1 is equal to 0. So given equation of directrix 
is y plus 1 is equal to 0, which gives you y is equal to minus 1. So that means this whole thing is equal to minus 1. Okay. 13 minus lambda upon 4 is equal to minus 1, which gives you 13 minus lambda is equal to minus 4 or uh, lambda is equal to 17. This is the value of the lambda. Hope this is clear till here. Now let's find out the value of what you have to find out. You have to, okay, you have to find out uh, which is correct. See, lambda is minus 17, lambda is minus 19. This is incorrect. Now we have to go for the focus and the vertex. Let's find out both of them. Let's find out the focus and the vertex. So, given equation of conic is x minus 3 square is equal to minus 4 y plus 2. Right? So, this will give you x square is equal to minus 4. We just calculated it came out to be minus 4 y. So, over here vertex is vertex x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. I hope you got this thing now how I am getting this y plus 2. See, this whole thing when you will put uh, uh, wait sorry Okay, so when I'm putting this lambda is equal to 17, so 17 minus 9 upon 4, this is equal to 8 upon 4, which is equal to 2. So this would have become y plus 2 over here. That is why. So now the capital for the vertex x is capital X is equal to 0 and y is equal to 0. That means it will give you x minus 3 is equal to 0 and y plus 2 is equal to 0, which gives you x is 3 and y is minus 2. So, from here I got the vertex as 3 comma minus 2. So, let's check with the vertex 3 comma minus 2. No, this is not the correct answer as well. Now, let's go on to find out the focus. So, for the focus. For the focus, I have x comma y which gives you x minus 3 I'm putting this is equal to 0 so it will give me that is x is equal to 0 and the uh, y will be equal to 1 sorry uh, from here I can get x is equal to 3 and this y is equal to minus of y plus lambda minus 9 upon 4 this is equal to 1 so this gives you y plus 17 minus 9 upon 4 is equal to minus 1 y plus 2 is equal to minus 1 or y is equal to 2 uh, minus 3 so what is the focus in this case it is equal to x is equal to 3 and y is equal to minus 3 so this is the focus. Let's check because we have all the other options as wrong and this is the focus. This is correct option C. Hope this question is clear to you. So I'm repeating the whole question. If the directrix of this parabola is y plus 1 is equal to 0, then which of the following is true? So first of all, pick up, pick up the parabola over here and uh, when you will solve this, you will get the equation as x minus 3 whole square is equal to minus 4. So actually this minus 4, this can be written as 4 into minus 1 as well. 4 into minus 1 uh, into y plus lambda minus 9 upon 2. So this whole can be written as x square into minus 4y or this can be written as 4 into minus 1 into y, the capital 1. Right? So, but we are also given the equation of the directrix is equal to y plus 1. That means y is equal to minus 1. So let's put this whole thing small y is equal to minus 1. From there you can get the value of lambda as 17. So the equation of the conic becomes x square is equal to minus 4y where capital Y is y plus 2 nothing but y plus 2 and the capital X is nothing but x minus 3. For the vertex you have to put the whole coordinates as 0 and 0. So if I'm putting this as 0 I'll get the small x as 3 and I'm putting this y as 0 I'm getting the small y as minus 2. 
that means I got my vertex at 3 comma minus 2. This is not available in the options. So let's move towards the focus now. So for the focus, what we have, we have the 0 comma a, right? What, what is the a? It is a coefficient of like minus 4 a y. So from here, you can say this is equal to minus 1, right? So minus uh, y plus lambda minus 9 upon 4 is equal to 1 or solving this whole thing, you will get the value of y as minus 3. Therefore, the focus becomes 3 comma minus 3 and this is option C. So option C is the correct answer to our question. Hope you are clear with this. Next is question number 53. The foci of the ellipse. You are given the equation of the ellipse R. So, okay, this is an easy question, quite easy one. This can be written as x square 9x square plus 25y square is equal to 225. So, now dividing both sides by 225, you will get x square upon 25 plus y square upon 9 is equal to 1. How? By dividing both sides by 225. So, this gives you from here, you can say what is the value of a. Okay, let's write down this can be written as 5 square y square upon 3 square is equal to 1. So, from here you can say a is equal to 5, b is equal to 3. So, you have to find out the foci of the ellipse. e can be written as 1 minus b square upon a square. 1 minus b square is 9, a square is 25. So, you will have 16 upon 25 which is equal to 4 upon 5. This is the eccentricity. So, now foci r plus minus a e upon a e comma 0. So, what is the value of a? It was 5 and e was 4 by 5. From here, a e can be written as 4. So, this can be written as plus minus 4 comma 0. This is the foci. Option a is the correct answer to this question. Hope you are clear with this. Next is question number 54. If 1 comma 2 is the focus x plus 2 y is equal to 0 and the directrix and root 2 is the eccentricity of the hyperbola, then the equation of the hyperbola is there are four options and you have to find out the correct one. Okay. So, first of all, you are given that if 1 comma 2 is the focus and x plus 2y is equal to 0 is the directrix and e is the eccentricity. Let's write down what all things are given to us. So, give me a minute. Okay. First of all, focus is 1 comma 2 directrix x plus 2y is equal to 0 and eccentricity Eccentricity is root 2. So, over here, if I'm saying uh, this is the point, this can be written as, give me a minute, yeah. Distance of x, y from focus is given by eccentricity into distance of directrix from x, y. So, this will become distance of x, y, x, y from the focus. This can be written as x minus 1 whole square root plus y minus 2 whole square root. It is 1 comma 2. Yeah. So, this is equal to eccentricity is root 2 into distance of the directrix from x comma y which can be written as x plus 2y whole divided by root of 1 square plus 2 square. Now, squaring both the sides, you will get x minus 1 square plus 
y minus 2 square is equal to root 2 square into x plus 2y upon root of 5 square. So, this will give you x square plus 1 minus 2x plus y square plus 4 minus 4y is equal to 2 to x plus 2y square upon root 5. It will give you the square will give you 5 only. Okay. So, now let's cross do the cross multiplication. You will have 5x square plus 5y square minus 10x minus uh, not yeah minus 20 y mm, plus 25 is equal to 2. I'll just open it up, right? 2x square plus 4y square multiplied by 2, 8y square plus 4xy multiplied by 2 gives you 8xy. So, this will give me 3x square minus 3y square minus 10x minus 20y minus 8xy plus 25 is equal to 0. So, this is the required equation 3x square minus 3y square uh, minus 10x minus 20y minus 8xy plus 25. Let's check with the options. You have to find out the equation of the hyperbola which comes out to be equation B. So, option B is the correct answer to the question. I hope this is clear to you. Next is question number 55. The locus of the point of intersection of this and this for the different real values of k is hyperbola h. If e is the centricity of h, then 4e square is given by. So, now the two equations are root 3x minus y minus 4 root 3x uh, k is equal to 0. The second one is root 3 kx plus ky minus 4 root 3 is equal to 0. Now, let this be equation 1 and this one be 2. Multiplying k in equation 1 and adding in equation 2. This will make it root 3 k x minus y k minus 4 root 3 k square plus root 3 k x plus k y minus 4 root 3 is equal to 0. So, let's solve. You will have 2 root 3 k x y k k y will get cancelled. Uh, this will be minus 4 root 3 k square minus 4 root 3 is equal to 0. Now, dividing both sides by root 3. Okay. So, you will have 2 k x minus 4 k square minus 4 is equal to 0. Now, again, dividing both sides by 2 k x minus 2k square minus 2 is equal to 0. Now, this will give you kx is equal to 2k square plus 2. I'll take the 2 common and x will be equal to 2k square plus 1 upon k. Right? Now, the second thing. First, we multiplied k in equation 1 and then added in equation 2. Now, we'll be doing the same thing. Multiplying k in equation 1 and subtracting from equation 2. So, you will get, let's see what you will get. Let's write down. Root 3 kx minus ky minus 4 root 3k square. So, you have to subtract this from equation 2. So, this whole thing will be subtracted from equation 2 which is equal to this. 
ke y minus root 3 is equal to 0. So this will make it minus root 3 k x plus k y plus 4 root 3 k square plus root 3 k x plus k y minus 4 root 3 is equal to 0. These two terms will get cancelled and you will have 2 k y plus 4 root 3 k square minus 4 root 3 is equal to 0. So, dividing both sides by 2, we will have k y plus 2 root 3 k square minus 2 root 3 is equal to 0. So, um, I'm missing out something. Okay, so yes, nothing. From here, let's calculate what comes out to be y. k y is equal to 2 root 3 minus 2 root 3 k square. This will give you 2 root 3, 1 minus k square upon k is the value of y, right? Or you can say y upon 3, y upon root 3 is equal to 2, 1 minus k square upon k, right? Now, let's fill in the value. Uh, see, over here, you can say, Let this be equation 4 and this be equation 3. So, you can say x plus y upon root 3 is equal to 2 1 plus k square upon k plus 2 1 minus k square upon k. This will be, I'll take the k in the denominator. And uh, 2 will be taken common. 1 plus k square plus 1 minus k square. They will cancel out and you will have 4 upon k. That means x plus y upon root 3 is equal to 4 upon k. Okay. Similarly, when you will solve it for x minus y by root 3, you will get the value as 4 k. Okay. This is the value for x minus y upon root 3. This is, comes out to be 4k and x plus y upon root 3. This comes out to be y upon k. Now, let's multiply both of them. You will get x plus y upon root 3. x minus y upon root 3 is equal to 4 upon k into 4k, which will be equal to 16. So, a plus b into a minus b, this becomes a square minus b square. So, you have this thing, this is equal to 16, right? Let's solve it further. 3x square minus 4. Okay, uh, let's do it otherwise. You can also say x square upon 16 minus y square upon 16, 3 is a 48 is equal to 1, right? So, over here, what will be a? It will be root of 16 that is equal to 4 and b will be equal to uh, root of 48. So, let it be like this only. Or you can simply say a square will be 16 and b square is equal to 48. You know the formula for eccentricity? e square is given by 1 plus b square upon a square. So, 1 plus 48 upon 16 which will give you 4. So, centricity square is equal to 4, but you have to find out 4e square, which is equal to 4 into 4, that is equal to 16. So, this is the required answer. 16. Option D is the correct answer to this, to this question. Hope you are clear. Next, question number 56. If the centroid of the triangle with these vertices is given by the midpoint of these two points, then P square plus Q square is given by. So, easy question, right? You are given centroid of the triangle with vertices 1, 2, 3. These three vertices is given by, it is 4 minus 1 plus 3. 
फोर माइनस वन प्लस थ्री होल डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री कॉमा पी माइनस वन प्लस फाइव पी माइनस वन प्लस फाइव डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री माइनस थ्री प्लस टू माइनस एट माइनस थ्री प्लस टू माइनस एट होल डिवाइडेड बाय थ्री सो दिस विल बी इक्वल टू यू विल सॉल्व दिस एंड यू विल हैव सिक्स अपॉन थ्री व्हिच इज इक्वल टू टू देन पी प्लस फोर अपॉन थ्री एंड दिस वन विल बी इक्वल टू माइनस नाइन अपॉन थ्री व्हिच विल बी इक्वल टू माइनस थ्री राइट दिस इज एंट्रॉइड ऑफ द ट्राइंगल विद दीज वर्टिस नेक्स्ट it is also given by the midpoint of these two points so let's calculate the midpoint of these two points midpoint of 1 4 minus 2 and q 2 minus 4 is 1 plus q upon 2 4 plus 2 upon 2 minus 2 minus 4 upon 2 so this will be equal to let's see this is 1 plus q upon 2 then 6 upon 2 3 minus 6 upon 2 minus 3 right if i look at these two let's equate both of them because they are the same they represent the same point so as the both both the points are same as both points are same therefore 2 is equal to 1 plus q upon 2 p plus 4 upon 3 is equal to 3 right and this minus 3 is my cos equal to minus 3 so just leave it from here i will calculate the q is equal to 3 and from here i'll calculate 9 minus 4 p is equal to 5 What do you have to find out in the question? P square plus Q square. So P square plus Q square is five square plus three square. Twenty five plus nine gives you thirty four. So let's check option D is the correct answer to our problem. Hope you are clear with this. Next is question number fifty seven. Array makes Pi by three and pi by four with y and z axes respectively. Then the value of sine of the angle made by the ray with the x axis is. So you know there are three axes, x, y, and the z axis. It is saying you that the ray makes pi by three with the y axis and pi by four with the z axis respectively. You have to find out the sine of the angle made by the ray with the x axis. First of all. If alpha, beta, and gamma are angles made by the ray with x, y, and z axes respectively, then you know cos square alpha plus cos Square beta plus cos square gamma is equal to one. You know uh, the values of beta and gamma. I don't know what about alpha, so let it the alpha be like this only cos square alpha plus cos square beta is pi by three. Cos square gamma is pi by four is equal to one. This cos square alpha this can be written as one minus sine square alpha plus Cos square pi by three pi by cos pi by three is actually cos of sixty degree, which gives you one by two. So this is one by four plus cos pi by four. This is equal to one by root two, which gives you one by two. This is equal to one. So they will cancel out. You will have the value of sine square alpha is equal to one by four plus one by two, which is equal to three by four. So this is sine square alpha. Sine alpha will be given by root three by four or root three by two. This is what you have to find out. You have to find out the value of the sine of the angle, which is root three by two. Option A is the correct answer to our problem. Hope you are clear with this. 
Let's move to the next question number 58. A plane meets the x, y, z axis in A, B, C respectively. So if the plane is meeting x axis, that means what will be the coordinates of A? A will have the coordinates as A0, 0. B is meeting y axis. So what will be the coordinates of B? 0, B0 0, and C will have the coordinates as 0, 0, C because it is meeting the z axis. All right. Now, if the centroid of the triangle is this, okay, you are given the centroid of the triangle. Uh, let's write down centroid of the triangle. If I am considering these three points, then this will be given by A plus 0 plus 0 upon 3, 0 plus B plus 0 upon 3, 0 plus 0 plus C upon 3, which gives you the centroid of this triangle is A by 3, B by 3 and C by 3. Now you are given that this centroid is actually equal to 2 comma minus 3 comma 5. So this is equal to 2 minus 3 and uh, 5. Right. So from here I can get the value of A. You know A by 3 is equal to 2. So A will be 6. B by 3 is equal to minus 3. So B will be equal to minus 9. C by 3 is equal to 5. So C will be equal to 15. Right. So next thing what is given is uh, all right. If the centroid of the triangle is this, then the perpendicular distance from the origin to the given plane is. Okay, so let's make the plane first of all. From here, the plane is given by x upon 6 minus y upon 9 plus z upon 15 is equal to 1. Now, perpendicular distance from origin is given by root of mm, wait. wait sorry yeah so now the perpendicular distance from the origin is given by modulus of 1 upon root of coefficient of x which is 1 by 6 square plus 1 by minus 1 by 9 square plus 1 by 15 square which is equal to mod of 1 upon 1 upon 36 1 upon 81 1 upon 225 so Let's solve it further. You will have the modulus of 1 upon whole 81 into 2, 2, 5 plus 36 into 2, 2, 5 plus 36 into 81 whole divided by 2 to 5 into 81 into 36. All right. So let's solve it further. You will have this as root of 5 square, this can be written as actually root of 2 to 5 into 81 into 36 whole divided by uh, 81 into 2 to 5 into all these things. So this is actually equal to 81 will be taken common from here. You will have 2 to 5 and uh, plus 4 into 5, uh, 4 into 15, this is equal to 60. Mm, just give me a minute. So, 9, 4 and 25 uh, multiply by 9. Yeah. So, this will be equal to 100 actually. This is 100 and uh, plus 36. 2 to 5 square root is 15. Multiply 9, multiply 6, whole divided by 9 root of 225 plus 100 plus 36 which is equal to 15 6 are 90 upon root of 361 this was actually whole in the mod so you will have this as 
90 upon 19 modulus hope you are clear till here then give me a minute so this is the correct answer let's check with the options yeah the perpendicular distance is given by uh yes option d so this option d is the correct answer to our question hope you are clear with this one let's move to the next question but before moving to the next question is a quick reminder if you want to practice all these questions and many more entrance exam question papers then do visit our website www.examsnet.com you can also download our app the link is available in the description box so students do visit our website there is a lot you can explore on it let's move to the next question question number 59 limit x approaching 0 this whole expression is equal to what so there's a slight modification actually this question is uh, x approaching infinity now let's solve limit x approaching infinity x cube whole multiplied by root of x square plus x raised to power 4 plus 1 root uh, this whole under the root minus root 2x now let's uh, multiply the numerator and the denominator by um, okay so it will be root of x square plus 1 x raised to power 4 plus 1 plus root 2x this whole thing in the numerator and the denominator so this will be root of x square plus x raised to power 4 plus 1 plus root 2x right now let's do the see this is something a and b so this is a minus b and this is a plus b that will be equal to simply a square minus b square so this becomes limit x approaching infinity a square minus b square when i'm squaring this a this will become x square plus root of x raised to power 4 plus 1 uh minus b square so this is 2x square whole will be divided by root of x square plus root of x square x raised to power 4 Plus one plus two root x, right? So now this will become. See, the numerator is having plus x square and minus x square, so it will be minus x square only, right? Now this will become. You can write it as limit x approaching zero, infinity, uh, root of x raised to power four, plus one minus x square whole divided by. root of x square plus x raised to power 4 plus 1 my plus this now let's again multiply the numerator and the denominator by this okay i have forgot to put this x cube right okay yeah this is there as well this x cube is there also so now let's do the same thing again so x cube now i'll be multiplying the numerator and the denominator by root of x raised to power 4 plus 1 plus x square whole divided by root of x square plus root of x raised to power 4 plus 1 plus this x raised to power 4 plus 1 plus x square so now let's do further this will be something see now this is a and this is b so this is a minus b into a plus b which is a square minus b square so x cube a square comes out to be this and b square is this they will cancel out and the denominator will be in the denominator one so i'll take uh, now x common from here uh okay this will be x will be taken common mm, wait you can just write on x square plus x square x square plus 1 upon x raised to power 4 okay uh one only sorry this is one give me a minute 
So this is just x, not just x. It's 1 plus 1 upon x raised to power 4. Uh, plus x is there also, so I'll just leave it like this. And now I'll take x square common from here. From this side, I'm taking the x square common. So this will be root of 1 plus 1 upon x raised to power 4 plus 1. Hope this is clear to you. So now it will become x limit. Uh, yeah, so limit x approaching infinity. x cube. Yeah. Now this, when I'm taking common from here, I'll take the x common from this. Right? And it will, in the inside, it will be root of 1 plus root of 1 plus 1 upon x raised to power 4 plus root of 2 into x square. So into x square, I can just write it over here, right? This will be x cube only. Now this will be root of 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 upon x raised to power 4 plus 1, right? Now these two things will cancel out and I will have just limit x approaching infinity 1 upon root of 1 plus root of 1 by 1 plus 1 by x raised to power 4 plus root 2 1 plus 1 upon x raised to power 4 plus 1. Now you know something when I'm saying let's put the x now 1 upon x here will be 1 upon infinity 1 divided by infinity is nothing but 0. So this will be equal to 1 upon root of 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus root of 2. This whole is multiplied by root of 1 plus 0 plus 1. So this will be 1 upon root of 1 plus 1. This is root 2 plus root 2 plus root 1 is 1. So this is equal to 1 plus 1 gives you 2. This will be 1 upon uh, yeah, this is plus, so 2 into this into 2, which is equal to 1 upon 4 into root 2. So, this is the answer to our question, 1 upon 4 root 2. Let's check with the options. Option C is got to be our correct answer. Hope you are clear with this. Next is question number 16. So, this question says you limit x approaching minus a, x raised to power 7 plus a raised to power 7 divided by x plus a is equal to 7. Here, a is equal to what? So, in this question, uh, let's write down first. In this question, you have something like this. So, in this question, let's put a is equal to uh, x is equal to minus a. So, what would what it will be? Minus a raised to power 7 plus a raised to power 7 divided by minus a plus a, right? They will cancel out. You will have minus a raised to power 7 plus a raised to power 7 divided by minus a plus a, which is nothing but of the form 0 upon 0, which is not allowed. So, what we can do, we'll apply the S L hospitals rule over here and uh, now this will become limit x approaching minus a. Let's take the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. So it will be 7x raised to power 6 plus 0 upon 1. x derivative is 1 plus 0. Now let's put it down. This is equal to 7. Now let's fill in the value. Let's approach x is equal to minus a. So this will be equal to 7 into minus a raised to power 6 plus 0. Okay, let's omit this 0. Whole divided by 1. Which gives you 7. This is equal to 7. They will cancel out. So minus a raised to power 6 is equal to 1. That means, oh, just a minute. Okay. So, over here, minus a, you can write down this as 6 only. So, minus a is equal to 1 or a is equal to minus 1. Right, this is the correct answer to the question. 
So plus minus one, option C is the correct answer to this question. Now, why is that? Actually, we are having an uh, we are having an even power over here. So this will be equal to plus minus one. Hope this is clear to you. Let's move to the next question number 61. Here you are given limit x approaching pi by 2, 1 minus. So this whole expression is there. You have to find out the value of it. Correct? So this is an easy one. Let's write it down. Limit x approaching pi by 2, 1 minus 10 x by 2 upon 1 plus 10 x by 2 multiply. 1 minus sine x upon pi minus 2x whole cube. This is equal to what? So over here, let's fill limit x approaching pi by 2. See, this one can be written as tan pi by 4 minus tan x by 2, 1 plus tan pi by 4 into tan x by 2 multiply 1 minus sin x upon pi minus 2x cube. This is equal to what? Now this is, uh, if you look at this formula, this is something tan a minus b. Where a is pi by 4 and b is x by 2. You can write it as limit x approaching pi by 2 tangent of pi by 4 minus x by 2 multiplied by 1 minus sin x upon pi minus 2x whole cube. So now let's put x is equal to pi by 4 in the whole expression. You will have put x approaching pi by 2 minus y. Where y is approaching 0. So this expression will become limit y approaching 0 tan pi by 4 minus pi by 2 minus y upon 2 whole divided by pi minus pi by 2 minus y this whole cube this is multiplied with 1 minus sine pi by 2 minus y. So now limit y approaching 0, 10. This will be uh, when I'm taking the LCM and all that. So this will be 10 pi by 2 whole divided. So 10 pi by 4 minus 10 pi by 4 minus y by 2 multiplied by 10. Uh, see this, not sorry, tan. It's not tan. 1 minus sine pi by 2 minus y. This can be written as cos y only. This is trigonometric ratios of the complementary angles. Whole divided by pi minus pi. Mm, yeah. So pi minus pi plus 2y whole cube. They will cancel out and they will cancel out. You will be left with y limit y approaching 0, tan y by 2, 1 minus cos y upon 8y cube. So this is limit y approaching 0. Tangent of pi by 2, 1 minus cos y, this is equal to 2 sine. 1 minus cos y, this is equal to 2 half of the angle. Uh, sine, okay, let's write. See, 1 minus cos a is equal to 2 sine a by 2. Sine square a by 2, okay. So, this can be written as 2 sine square y by 2 upon 64 into into y by 2, into y by 2. Now, why is that? Actually, I want to have 3 y by 2s to accommodate with this tan y and 2 sin y's, right? 8 multiplied by 8 will give you 64. So, I'll rewrite this one. Limit y approaching 0, tan y by 2. This is 1 upon 64 multiplied by this. 
साइन y बाय टू अपॉन वाई बाय टू साइन वाई बाय टू अपॉन वाई बाय टू सो ओके वी हैड अ ट्यू आल्सो इन द न्यूमिरेटर दिस वन दिस विल बी रिटर्न ओवर हियर सो दिस इज इक्वल टू वन बाय थर्टी टू इंटू वन इंटू वन इंटू वन विच इज इक्वल टू वन बाय थर्टी टू सो दिस इज द आंसर टू आर क्वेश्चन लेट्स चेक विद ऑप्शन Option A is the correct answer to this question. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question, number sixty-two. F x is equal to four when x lies between this interval. X squared minus one when x lies between this interval, and four when x lies between this interval. If k is the number of points where f x is not differentiable, then k minus two is equal to. So first of all, what are the points to check? It's minus five and five. Let's write down points to check. X is equal to minus of root five, and x is equal to root five. Now, f x is equal to. You are given this whole thing, right? I don't need to rewrite it. So, add x. Is equal to minus five. Then left hand limit will be equal to f of minus five, right? So f of minus five. This is left hand limit. This is nothing but equal to four. It's given. See for the minus five left hand limit. When we are moving towards the left side of minus root of minus five, then we are having the f x is equal to four value, right? And the R H S. Right hand limit when I'm moving to the positive, like to the uh, right side of minus five, then also it is equal to. See on the right side, it is equal to x square minus one, which gives you minus five minus root five square minus one, which is five minus one. That is four again. So they both are equal. Now let's go for finding out the derivative. Let's go for the left hand derivative. Left hand derivative if is something like you have to find out the derivative of. Okay, give me a minute. You have to find out the derivative of four. Derivative of a constant is zero. Let's go with the right hand derivative. So right hand derivative you will have. Uh, you will have to find out the derivative of x square minus one, which is. Two x, which is equal to two minus root five, minus two root five. This is the right hand derivative. So they both are not equal. They were equal. Uh, the left hand limit and the right hand limit were equal, but the derivatives are not equal. So left hand derivative is not equal to right hand derivative. Therefore, this is not differentiable at x. Is equal to minus root five. Now let's move to the second one. The point to check was x is equal to five, root five. So at x is equal to root five. Let's go on to find the. You see the limits; they were the same, right? Over here, x is. Uh, see, it is saying you same. So we just calculated, right? It was same. The left hand limit and the right hand limit. It was same. Let's go on for the left hand derivative and the right hand derivative. What is the left hand derivative? See, when we are having to the left side of root five, that means x square minus one will be considered. So derivative of x square minus one is two x, which is equal to two into root five. And what is the right hand derivative? Right hand derivative is a derivative of four, right? Which is a constant, so it will be zero. Since they are not equal, therefore, f x is not differentiable at x is equal to root five. Now, what it is saying about k? K is the number of points where x is not differentiable. How many points were there? There were two points where x was not differentiable. That means k is equal to two. And what is k minus two then? That is zero. 
Let's check option C is the correct answer to the question. Hope you are clear with this. Next is question number 63. Assertion and reason. This is an assertion and a reason question. Okay. So assertion says fx is equal to mod of x is differentiable at x is equal to a which is not equal to 0 and continuous but not differentiable at x is equal to 0. Reason for this is if a function is differentiable at a point then it is continuous at, a, at that point but converse is not true. Let's try and make a graph for this. First of all fx is equal to modulus of x. So this is the graph for the same fx is always positive no matter what the value of x is. Maybe negative, maybe positive. So, this is your x-axis and this is your y-axis. So, maybe negative, maybe positive, whatever the value of x, y is got to be positive only. Okay. From here, it is very much clear. Looking at the graph, it is very much clear that fx is continuous everywhere. But it's not differentiable at x is equal to 0. Due to its sharp edge. Due to its sharp edge. Therefore, fx is differentiable if x belongs to all the real numbers except 0. Right? So, from here, this assertion is correct, but the reason is not the correct explanation of it. Option A is the correct answer. Hope you are clear with this. Next is question number 64. So, if the derivative of uh, this whole expression is equal to this, then this expression is equal to what? All right. First of all, let's uh, assume y is equal to x squared plus 1 whole divided by x squared plus 5 into x squared plus 9. Right? Now, taking log on both sides. Taking log on both sides sides. So, if I am taking log, that makes log of y is equal to log of x squared minus 1. Since this is in the division, right? So, I will say minus log of x squared plus 5 minus log of x squared plus 9, right? Now, let's take the derivative. Taking derivative, On both sides. So log of y, the derivative will be 1 by y multiplied by dy by dx. This is equal to log of x squared plus 1. This will be equal to log of, um, actually this will be 2x, right? Log of x squared and 1's derivative has got to be 0. So I will not write down that one, okay? First of all, it will be this, okay? So log of x squared plus 1 derivative will be 1 by x squared plus 1 multiplied the derivative of x squared plus 1 minus 1 by x squared plus 1 into the derivative of x squared. 5's derivative will be 0. Minus 1 upon x squared plus 9 into the derivative of x squared which is 2x. Now let's take 2x common. This will be 1 by x squared plus 1 minus 1 by x squared plus 5 minus 1 by x squared plus 9. So, I'll take the y out. This is equal to dy by dx. Uh, I'll keep it. Uh, okay, let's multiply y over here. Right? What is the value of y? Let's fill in. So, 2x. y was equal to x squared plus 1 whole divided by x squared plus 5 x squared plus 9. So, I'll leave this thing. I'll not uh, solve this because see, here is fx, gx and hx. That means three functions of different functions of f uh, of x are given over here. So, this can be your fx, this can be your gx and this one can be your hx. 
right? And uh, fx was your y. Y was nothing but your fx. So, okay. Mm, no, sorry, y is not your fx. Y is this one. Yeah. So now, this is, you can write it as, this is equal to 1 upon fx minus 1 upon gx minus 1 upon hx. Right? So, now you got it. You see, this is of the same form. And over here, we are having the same thing. So, that means fx is equal to x squared plus 1. gx is equal to x squared plus 5. And x hx is equal to x squared plus 9. So, what we had to find out? 2hx minus fx minus gx. So, 2hx minus gx minus fx. 2x square plus 9 minus x square minus 5 minus x square minus 1. This is equal to 2x square plus 18 minus x square. Uh, this is minus 2x square minus 6. They will cancel out and you will have 12 as your answer. So option A is the correct answer to the question. Hope you are clear with this. Question number 65, equation of the tangent to this curve, which is parallel to the x-axis. So, this is the x-axis and the tangent, this is parallel to the x-axis, which simply means if it is parallel to the x-axis, that means slope of tangent is 0. You are given the curve equation as y is equal to x plus 4 upon x square. So, if you want to find out uh, the, um, I mean, at any point, the slope of this curve, this is given by taking the derivative of y with respect to x, which can also be written as y dash. This is equal to, what is the derivative of x? 1. Derivative of, uh, of 4. Uh, 1 by x squared. So, the 1 by x squared derivative is minus 2 upon x raised to power 3, which makes the derivative of uh, this equation or the curve as 1 minus 8 upon x cube. So, this is the derivative or you can say this represents a slope also. We already talked about that the slope is equal to 0 because it is parallel to the x-axis, which gives you 1 minus 8 upon x cube is equal to 0. From here, you can say 1 is equal to 8 upon x cube or x will be equal to 2. Right. So, this is the x is equal to 2. Now, at x is equal to 2, what will be the value of y? y is equal to x plus 4 upon x square. So, it will be 3. So, at x is equal to 2, y is equal to 3. That means the point at which we have to make the tangent to the curve is 2 comma 3. Now, what will be the equation of the line? We are already known about the slope. Slope is 0. So, this equation of the line is y is equal to 3. This is the equation of the line which is tangent to the given curve and parallel to the x-axis. Option C. Hope you are clear with this. Next is question number 66. The normal to this curve, y is equal to fx at point 3, 4, makes an angle 3 pi by 4 with the positive f uh, x-axis, then f dash 3 is equal to. So, you are given y is equal to fx. Let's find out the derivative. So, dy by dx is nothing but the derivative of this function as well. So, slope at this point, slope of normal, at 3 comma 4 will be given by 1 minus 1 by derivative of the function at x is equal to 3. Right. Now, this is given that this is equal to 3 pi by 4. That is, this is equal to 3 tangent of 3 pi by 4. So, here, what is tan of 3 pi by 4? Wait, 1 upon this. This is equal to minus 1, which gives you Derivative of the function at x is equal to 3 is equal to 1. So, this is what you have to find out. Yes. Option C is the correct answer. 
Hope you are clear. Next is question number 67. The minimum distance of a point on this curve from the origin is. You are given the curve as y is equal to x square minus 4. Minimum distance from the origin is along the normal passing through the origin. Minimum distance of a point from origin is along the normal passing through the origin. Now consider a point on the curve. Consider a point on curve which is having the x coordinate as h. So what will be the y coordinate? h square minus 4. Slope of tangent. See the slope will be equal to the derivative, first derivative. So this is equal to 2x. This 2x is equal to 2h at the point h, h square minus 4. So this is the slope of the tangent. What will be the slope of normal? It will be minus 1 by 2h, right? Therefore, equation of normal is y minus h square minus 4 is equal to 1 minus 1 upon 2h x minus h. Now since this is passing through origin, so since this also passes through origin. So this can be written as 0 minus h square plus 4 is equal to 1 minus 2h minus h which will give you h minus h square plus 4 is equal to 1 by 2. From here you can say we will find out that h is equal to root of plus minus root of 7 by 2. Therefore the point on the curve at the minimum distance from the origin therefore point on the curve at minimum distance from origin can be plus minus root 7 by 2 and h square minus 4 this will give you minus 1 by 2. Right, this is, so now the one point is origin and the second point is this. Therefore, minimum distance is 7 by 2 minus 0 plus minus 1 by 2 minus 0 whole square. So, this will be equal to 49 by 4 plus 1 by 4. This will be equal to 50 upon 4, which will be equal to, uh, this will go at 25 and this will go at, okay, leave it. Um, this one solving will, wait a minute, I can take 2 and root of 50. So this will give me 5 root 2. There is a small mistake, actually this was root 2 and this whole thing will change now. So, this will be equal to 7 by 2 plus 1 by 4. So, let's take the LCM. It will be 4. So, 14 plus 15 by 2. So, root of 15 upon 2. This is the minimum distance. So, option C is the correct answer. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question number 68. In an, if an open cylinder of given surface area has maximum volume, then its radius is height of the cylinder, half of the height of the cylinder, two times height of the cylinder or three times height of the cylinder. You are given one thing, cylinder is open. Uh, cylinder is open. Also, let the radius of the base be R. Radius of the base is equal to R. 
and height of the cylinder is equal to h. So the surface area A will be equal to the curved surface area which is 2 pi rh plus uh, area of the base which is pi r square. Right? So if I'm saying this A, A minus pi r square upon 2 pi r, this is equal to the height. Correct? What is the volume of the cylinder formula? Volume is given by pi r square h. Let's fill in the value of h. So pi r square h is equal to a minus pi r square upon 2 pi r whole multiply which on solving mm, the whole thing you will solve and see this r and r will get cancelled pi and pi will get cancelled and uh, you are going to have r by 2 a minus pi r square. This is the volume. Now it is talking about to have the maximum volume. So that means we have to find out the derivative of it. Derivative of the volume with respect to the radius. This is given by a minus 2 minus 3 pi. Not given, we will solve it. Yeah, minus 3 pi r square pi 2. This is equal to 0. From here, you will calculate that a is equal to 3 pi r square. Right? And now, let's find out the second derivative of it. So d square v upon d r square is equal to minus 3 pi r right so this is less than equal less than 0 so that means at area 3 pi r square we have the maximum volume so area 3 pi r square. This is equal to 2 pi r h plus pi r square. Right? See, over here, 3 pi r square. I have this h is equal to a minus pi r square upon 2 pi r. Let's h is equal to a minus pi r square upon 2 pi r. So, area uh, 3 pi r square minus pi r square upon 2 pi r. Mm, this will be 2 pi r square upon 2 pi r. Right? Okay. So, this will cancel and you have h is equal to r. So, forget about this line. So, at area 3 pi r square you have h is equal to radius that is the height and radius they are equal this is answer to the question option a height of the cylinder and the radius of the cylinder they are equal so this is the answer to our question hope you are done with it clear with it let's go to the next question number 69 but before that students if you want to practice all these questions then please visit our website www.examsnet Dot com. The link is available in the description box. You can also download our app. So for these questions, you are getting them. You can rewind the video and watch them and redo, repractice these questions at your own pace. Next is question number 69. It says if x plus y is equal to k, x and y, they are greater than 0, then x square plus y square will be minimum if you are given that this x plus y, this is equal to k. Or you can say y is equal to k minus x. x and y, they both are greater than 0. Now consider, so this is uh, a x square plus y square is equal to some a. So, x square plus y square can be written as k minus x whole square, which will be equal to x square plus a square plus x square minus 2kx, which will be 2x square minus 2kx plus a square. This is the a. Now it is said you that uh, you require a minimum value. So now in the question, they have told you that this will be minimum if this is something we have to find out the condition when this a will be minimum. 
For that, let's find out the first derivative of a with respect to x. This will be equal to 4x minus 2k. Right? And uh, this for the minimum value, this has to be put equals to 0, which gives you x is equal to k by 2. Now, let's find out the second derivative of a with respect to x. This will be equal to 4, which is greater than 0. Therefore, at x is equal to y is equal to k by 2. See, y will be, y was x minus k, right? So, uh, wait, y was k minus x, sorry. Just check. Yeah, it was k minus x. Y was k minus x. So, uh, k minus k by 2 will be equal to k by 2 only. So, at x is equal to y is equal to k by 2, we have minimum value of x square plus y square. So, let's check with the options. Option C is the correct answer for the question. Hope you are clear with this. Question number 70, you have to find out the integral of this given expression. So, this is integral of dx 1 plus root x whole raised to power 2022. Uh, dx is already written. Let's put root of x is equal to t, which makes x is equal to t square, which makes dx upon dt is equal to 2d, 2t which means dx is equal to 2t into dt. So, our integral will become dx, this can be written as 2t into dt upon 1 plus t whole raised to power 2022. So, now let's add and subtract 1 from the numerator. This will become, I'll take 2 outside. This will be integral of t plus 1 upon t plus 1 whole raised to power 2022 dt minus min, uh, 1 1 plus 2t, 2, 2 raised to power 2022 into dt. So, this will cancel out and you will have 2021 over here. So, 2, 1 upon t plus 1 raised to power 2021 into dt minus 1 upon t plus 1 raised to power 2022 dt. This is whole under the brackets. Now, let's find out the integral. So, it will be 2 bracket starts. So, minus 1. 1 less than 2021 is 2, 0, 2, 0. t plus 1 raised to power 2, 0, 2, 0. Minus of minus 1 upon 2, 0, 2, 1. 1 less than 2022 is 2021. t plus 1, 2021 plus some constant. Now, okay, um, see, in the, let's look at the options also. So, I have something in the options which is x raised to, over here, I'm having 2021 and 2022. So, okay, what I'll do is now, I'll take two outside and I can write down t plus 1 over here and this will be 2020 whole multiplied by t plus 1 one power will be raised because I'm multiplying the numerator and the denominator by t plus 1 plus 1 upon 2021 into t plus 1 raised to power 2021 plus some c. Now, it will be 2 upon t plus 1 raised to power 2021 minus t plus 1 upon 2020 plus 1 upon 2020. 1 plus some c. So, let's fill in because we are done with the question. Just we have to fit, fill what the value of t is because t was not originally in our question. So, root of x plus 1 raised to power 2021 20, minus root of x plus 1 upon 2020 20, plus 1 upon 2021 20, plus some constant. And let's check it matches with what which of the options. Okay, 2021, here it is. Okay, but uh, I have a plus over here and a minus over here. So, actually, the answer over here will be this is got to be minus and this one is supposed to be of plus. This one of 
minus and this is of plus. So this is the correct option. Option A. Hope you are clear with this. Next is question number 71. Again, an integral question with us, but over here now you are given this integral, which is equal to some ax raised to part 5 plus bx raised to part 3 plus cx plus k. So let's go with this. Let's write down the integral. So it is integral of x raised to power 8 plus 4 upon x raised to power 4 minus 2x squared plus 2 dx. So this will be like uh, adding wait, plus 4. Now I'll be adding plus 4x raised to power 4 minus x raised to 4x raised to power 4 divided by x raised to power 4 minus 2x squared plus 2 dx. So see this is something of the form. Uh, x raised to power 4 plus 2 square minus this can be written as 2x square square right it's whole divided by x raised to power 4 minus 2x square plus 2 dx so this is something of the form a square minus b square where a is x raised to power 4 plus 2 and b is 2x square uh, let's solve it this will give you x raised to power 4 plus 2 plus 2x square x raised to power 4 plus 2 minus 2x square whole divided by x raised to power 4 plus 2 minus 2x square dx so they will cancel out and you will be left with x raised to power 4 plus 2x square plus 2 dx now it's easy just have to find out the integral of it so what will be the integral you will be adding 1 to the power of x and dividing by the power. So, this is equal to x raised to power 5 plus 5. Similarly, this will be x 2x raised to power 3 upon 3 plus 2x plus some constant. Right? Uh, C is already being used in the question. So, I will put a k over here. So, this was given in the question. This is equal to a x raised to power 5 plus b x cube plus c x plus k. So, this is equal to a x raised to power 5 plus b x cube plus c x plus some k. So, obviously equating uh, the coefficients, you will have a is equal to 1 by 5, b is 1 by 3, c is 2. And let's check what you have to find out. 5a plus 3b plus c. So, 5a is 5 into 1 by 5 plus 3 into 1 by 3 and plus c was equal to 2 which will make it like 1 by 1 plus 1 plus 2 mm, give me a minute b was equal to 2 by 3 yeah so b was equal to 2 by 3 here will be 2 by 3 and you will have 5 as your answer option b hope you're clear with this Question number 72, you have to find out the integral of the given expression. Let that be equal to i. So, i is equal to root of x plus x square plus 2 whole dx. If I put the inside term, see if you just look at the inside expression. x root of x square plus 2 plus x into root of x square plus 2 minus x. This is equal to 2. If I put this equal to t, putting root of x square plus 2 plus x is equal to t, then x square plus 2 minus x, this will be equal to 2t. If I add both of them now, I'll get 2 root of x square plus 2 is equal to t plus 2 upon t which will give me x square plus 2 is equal to t plus 2 upon t whole divided by 2. So now I hope this is clear till here. Now let's uh, pick up this one. x square plus 2 plus x is equal to t. If I find out the derivative of it, it will be equal to x upon root of x squared plus 2 plus 1 dx into is equal to dt. Right? So, let's let's uh, solve it further. I hope like this be equation 1. Let it be like this only. 
and uh, I'll say this will be x plus root of x square plus two whole divided by x square plus two dx is equal to dt, which will give me this is equal to t if I put it in terms of t. And see, root of x square plus 2, we just solved this was equal to this. t plus 2 upon t whole divided by 2. So, 2 will go up. t plus 2 upon t dx is equal to dt, which gives you dx is equal to, uh, this is equal to t plus 2 upon t upon 2t dt. Hope this is clear to you. Now let's pick up our integral which we left in the starting. So here, here we are. We have done all the preparations to solve it, not just solve it. So we had to find out the integral of root of root of x squared plus 2 plus x dx, right? So this is nothing but root of t. We assume this one to be t. And dx we just calculated, this is equal to t plus 2 upon t upon 2 t dt, right? So, let's solve it. You will have this as integral of t, uh, root of t plus 2 plus uh, this will be equal to 2 and 2 will get cancelled over here. And uh, you will have t raised to power minus 3 by 2 over here yeah this whole multiplied by dt now let's find out the integral because we have simplified it enough so uh, 1 by 2 it will be taken outside what will be the integral of uh, uh, integral of under root 2 see this will be equal to you will be raising it to the power like 3 by 2 and dividing it with 3 by 2 as well plus same thing will come over here so plus 1 over here minus 3 by 2 plus 1 by 2 divided by minus 3 by 2 and uh, sorry not uh, plus 1 by 2 it's plus 1 yeah plus 1 so this whole plus some c this will be 1 by 2 2 and 2 will get cancelled and you will have t raised to power 3 by 2 upon 3 plus um, okay this is minus actually minus t raised to power minus uh, 1 by 2 upon 1 by 2. So this is equal to t raised to power 3 by 2 upon 2 minus 1 upon uh, 2 upon t raised to power or you can say simply root 2 plus some c. So this will be t square. Let's take the LCM t square minus uh, 6 upon 3 root t plus some c. So, next we just have to fill in the value of t and c now. It will be t was assumed to be equal to x square plus 2 plus x this whole square minus 6 upon 3 root of root of x square plus 2 plus x plus the c. So this whole thing, the only thing was um, like I have just filled in the value for t and t was assumed to be root of x square plus 2 plus x and t square will be the square of it. Right. Let's check with the options, which is the correct one. Okay. So here we have option D is the correct answer to the question. Hope you are clear with this. Question number 73. If integral of this function is equal to minus 1 by root 2 tan inverse fx plus c, then fx is equal to. So, you are given, let it be i, this integral is integral of sine x minus pi by 4 whole divided by 2 plus sine 2x dx. So, here I will be using sine a minus b formula. Uh, sine a minus b is sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. So, using this formula also you have one more thing that sine 2x is equal to 2 sine x cos x. So, I will be using these two formulas. This makes integral is equal to sine x minus, okay, uh, sorry. 
this is uh, i'll be saying it will be uh, see over here a is x and b is this so sin a which is sin x cos b cos pi by 4 minus cos a sin b 2 plus sin 2x will be given by 2 sin x cos x dx cos pi by 4 this is equal to 1 by root 2 so integral of sin x into 1 by root 2 minus cos x into integral of oh sorry not integral sin pi by 4 is 1 by root 2 again uh, so 1 plus 1 plus 2 sin x cos x dx see this 1 plus 2 sin x dx uh, cos x this can be written as sin square x plus sin square x plus cos square x plus 2 sin x cos x which is nothing uh, but uh, you can write it as sin x plus cos x square right so now this integral will become 1 by root 2 will be taken common and you have sin x minus cos x upon 1 plus sin x plus cos x whole square dx now let's put sin x put sin x plus cos x is equal to t which makes let's take out the okay so now let's take out the differentiating both sides sin x uh, will become cos x and cos x will become minus sin x dx is equal to dt right now let's fill in over here so you will make uh, this integral i is equal to 1 by root 2 integral of this will be uh, see this is cos x minus sin x and here is sin x minus cos x so this will be equal to minus dt upon 1 plus t square i hope this is clear so this will become minus 1 by root 2 and uh, over here i am having 1 plus 1 upon 1 plus t square dt which is actually equal to tan inverse t plus because I am uh, uh, solving the integral. So, some constant will also be added over here. So, if I compare this with the given equation. Which was equal to minus 1 by root 2 tan inverse fx plus c. This is equal to minus 1 by root 2 tan inverse fx plus c. So, this fx is actually equal to t. And what was equal to t? It was sin x plus cos x right okay so sin x plus cos x this is not available so we have to find some alt alternative okay so if i see i have something which involves cos this is not the correct op option uh, this is also seeming to be let's check with the other ones sin x plus cos x this can be written as sin x into 1 by root 2 plus cos x into 1 by root 2 multiplying it with root 2. 1 by root 2 is sin pi by 4 plus cos x cos pi by 4 whole multiplied by root 2. So this is the formula say so sin a sin b plus cos a cos b. This is the formula of cos a minus b. So cos x minus pi by 4 multiplied. This whole thing will be multiplied with root 2. So let's check with the options which is the correct one. Option b is the correct answer to the question. Hope you are clear with this. Let's move to the next question. Question number 74. You have to find out the integral of cos raised to power minus 8x dx. The limits are given to you. So, you are given the integral as minus pi by 4 to pi by 4 cos minus 8x dx. This can be split it into, uh, actually this is equal to minus pi by 4 to 
pi by 4, 1 upon cos 8x dx, which also can be written as minus pi by 4 to 4 integral uh, secant raised to power 6x into secant square x dx, right? You know, 1 by cos x is equal to secant x. So, you know how to solve such type of questions. I'll put tan x is equal to t. Now, differentiating on both sides, I'll get secant square x dx is equal to dt, which will make my integral as from minus pi by 4 to pi by 4. Now, um, secant uh, raised to power 6x, this can be written as, um, okay, this can be written as secant raised to power 2x cube into secant square x dx. See, now you can write down secant square x as 1 plus tan square x. You know this identity. So, all I need to do is change x into dx. Uh, sorry, change x into t. So, minus pi by 4 to pi by 4. This can be written as, you know, this uh, tan x, this was equal to t. So, this can be written as 1 plus t square. 1 plus t square whole raised to power 3 into dt. Right? Hope this is clear till here. Now let's open up. Okay, one more thing. If I'm changing this, then limits will also also change, right? Uh, you know this for pi by four, tan minus pi by four is equal to minus one, and tan pi by four is equal to one, right? So now let's change the limits as well over here. Here the limits will be minus one and 1 right so now let's open up this will be mine uh, this actually can be written as 0 to 1 right i'll take the 2 outside 2 into now open up a plus b whole cube this is written as a cube plus b cube plus 3 a b into a plus b so this makes it 3 a b which is 3 into 3, uh, 3 into 3 raised to power 4 plus 3 t square dt. So, this is equal to, I'll take 2 outside. Now, this will be 0 to 1 t raised to power 6 plus 3 t raised to power 4 plus 3 3 t raised to power 2 plus 1 dt. Now, let's find out the integral of it. You will get 2 from this will be t raised to power 7 upon 7 plus 3 t raised to power 5 upon 5 plus 3 t raised to power 3 upon 3 plus t plus some constant. So the limits were from 0 to 1. This will be let's put the limits from 0 to 1. So this will be 1 upon 7, they will cancel out plus 1 plus this will also cancel 1 plus 1. So, minus 0, minus 0, minus 0, minus 0, plus C. So, this will give me, um, okay, give me a minute. Sorry, this is, I've just cancelled 3 by 5, which is not possible. So, it will be 3 by 5 over here. Okay, sorry, this is 3 and 5 as it is. Here is 3 and here is 5. Correct? So, yeah, this will give me. 2, 1 by 7 plus 3 by 5 plus 2, which on solving will give me 192 upon 35. So, this is the correct answer to the question. Let's check with the options. Option C is the correct answer for the question. Hope you are clear with this one, right? Let's move to the next question number 75. So, we are having some good integral questions everywhere. Okay, let's move it further. So, now, the integral is given by from uh, actually this is not a minus 1 this is a plus 1 give me a minute so the required integral is from a plus 1 till a this is not a actually this is I think alpha yeah this is alpha so like this okay so, over here you are having a x a minus x upon uh, x 
minus alpha plus 1 whole square dx. So this can be written as from alpha plus 1 till alpha. Let's open it up so I can say a minus x minus 1 plus 1 whole divided by x minus alpha not a alpha plus 1 whole square dx. This can be written as alpha plus 1 to alpha ex will be taken common. So here you will have let's open it up. So you will have over here 1 upon x minus alpha plus 1 whole square. See this I have just opened this one first right and then this is x plus alpha minus alpha. So they these two are having the opposite sign. Simply I can write it as minus 1 upon x minus alpha plus 1 whole dx. Right? Hope this is clear till here. Next, this on solving will give you like find out the integral. So, you will get minus e x x minus alpha plus 1 not square. From the limits alpha plus 1 till alpha. Now, let's fill in. You will have minus e raised to power alpha upon alpha minus alpha plus 1 minus minus will become plus. So, e raised to power alpha plus 1 upon alpha plus 1 minus alpha plus 1. They will cancel out and you will have minus e raised to power alpha plus e raised to power alpha plus 1 upon 2 which is e raised to power alpha. See, this is actually equal to, this one is actually equal to e raised to power alpha into e. So, I'll take e raised to power alpha common, which will leave me with e minus 2 upon 2. Like the whole solving, when you will solve this as a whole, you will get this as the result. Let's check with the options. Option D is the correct answer for the question. Hope you're clear. Next is question number 76. So, okay. You have to find out, you are given, uh, n belongs to the natural numbers if i n is given by this and this is actually given by this equation and integral of sine nx upon sine x from 0 to pi dx is equal to this, then k is equal to what? Okay, so you are given that i n is equal to 2 upon n minus 1 into sine n minus 1 x right uh, this is the limit from given from 0 to n okay this is from i have to find out from 0 to n plus i n minus 2 so from here what i get is from here i can say i1 is equal to i3 is equal to i5 and so on also i2 plus uh, sorry, not plus, I2 is equal to I4, is equal to I6 and so on. Correct. Now, let's find out I1. So, I1 is given by integral of 0 to pi. Look at this one. So, integral of uh, 0 to pi sin x upon sin x dx. They will cancel out and you will have x. 0 to pi which is equal to pi. Next I2 is given by integral 0 to pi uh, sin 2x upon sin x dx which is equal to 0 to pi 2 sin x cos x upon sin x dx. They will cancel out and uh, you will have 2 will come outside 0 to pi cos x dx. Okay, so what is integral? It will be minus sin x, 2 will be there. So, which will give me a value of 0. Right? You have one thing. You have one thing that is i1 is equal to i3 is equal to i5. That means this pi, uh, this pi, this can be written as pi is actually equal to 2 into pi by 2. So, this is something equal to, this can be written as 1 minus 1 raised to power n into pi by 2. 
This is if n is odd. And what if n is even? If n is even, then I have something like i2 is equal to i4 is equal to i6 and so on. But this is equal to 0. In this case, it was equal to pi. So, this is actually equal to, the 0 is actually equal to 1 minus, minus 1 raised to power n pi by 2 if n is even. So, hope you are clear with this one. Let's check with the options. What is the correct answer? Option B is the correct answer for the question. Hope you are clear with this. Next is question number 77. You are given fx is equal to sine of tan inverse x, then integral of 0 to 1 x, second derivative of fx dx is equal to what? So, first thing, you are given fx is equal to sine of tan inverse x. Let's find out the first derivative. So, first derivative is equal to sine will be converted into tan. So, cos of tan inverse x upon the derivative of tan inverse x, which is 1 plus x square. Right? This is the first derivative. So, let's move forward. If I'm finding out uh, this. So, this can be written as integral is equal to. You have to find out 0 to 1. Second derivative of this. So, this is given by first function into integral of second. So, integral of the second derivative of this minus integral of derivative of first. Derivative of x is equal to 1 into integral of second. Right? Plus some constant. So, this will be equal to integral of second derivative will be the first derivative minus integral of integral of second derivative which will be the first derivative dx plus c. This is equal to x into first derivative of x minus fx. Okay, we forgot about the intervals. They were from 0 to 1, 0 to 1. So, this is from 0 to 1. This is from 0 to 1 plus c. I hope this is clear till here. Now, let's fill in the values. So, first thing, you need to find out this. Integral first derivative at x is equal to 1, right? You have to find out this. So, actually, this can be written as 1 into f dash 1 minus f1 minus 0, right? Okay, so this is equal to, let's find out, f dash 1, this can be written as, this was equal to cos into tan inverse of 1 upon 1 plus 1 square. Tan inverse of 1 is given by pi by 4, so cos pi by 4 upon 2, cos pi by 4 is 1 by root 2, so this will be equal to 1 by 2 root 2. Also, this is 1 by 2 root 2. Also, you have to find out f1. So, f1 is given by sine of tan inverse x. So, sine of tan inverse 1, which will be sine pi by 4, which will be equal to 1 by root 2. Minus 1 by root 2. Now, this will give me 2 root 2 will be the LCM 1 minus 2. So, minus 1 upon 2 root 2 will be the answer to the question. Let's check with the options. Okay, here I have, yeah, option B. This is the answer to our question. Hope you are clear. Next is question number 78. If A and B are respectively the order and degree of this differential equation, then, okay. So, basically in this question, you have to find out the order and the degree. Okay. So, let's write it down. You have y square into the y double dash square plus 3xy dash raised to power 1 by 3 plus x square y square is equal to sine x. So, let's do one thing. I'll 
take this one on the uh, right hand side and this one on the left hand side. So this will become y square into y double dash square plus x square y square minus sine x is equal to 3x y dash raised to power 1 by 3. So this can be written as y square y double dash square plus x square y square minus sine x Re whole cube is equal to a fall cube like you can say cubing both sides. So the RHS will become 27x cube y dash. All right. So now what do you want? We want the order and the degree of it. And what is order and the degree? If we talk about the order of a differential equation, then order of the differential equation is the order of highest order, highest order derivative in the differential equation and degree of it. The degree of the differential equation is the power of highest order derivative of that differential equation, right? So according to this question, then what is the order and the, the degree? Order which is given by A is nothing but, see it is the order. So we are having the second one, right? It's the second order derivative. So is equal to two. And what about the degree which is given by B? Degree is given by B. So it is the power of it. See why? second derivative raised to power 2 which is again raised to power 3. So that means the power of this is 6. That means b is equal to 6 from here. This is quite uh, obvious what is the value of uh, what is the relationship between a and b. b is equal to 3 times of a. So what is the correct answer? Option c. This is the correct answer to the question. Hope you are clear. Next question number 79. So, in this question, you are given, okay, an integrating factor of the differential equation, this is, let's write it down. You are given the equation as x squared plus 1 dy by dx plus xy is equal to x cubed. Dividing both sides by 1 plus x squared will give you dy by dx plus xy upon 1 plus x squared is equal to x cubed plus 1 plus x squared. So, this can be written as dy by dx plus x1 plus x square y is equal to x cubed 1 plus x square. So, here what is the integrating factor? Integrating factor is this e raised to power integral of this. So, this is nothing but if you are going to find integral, you will have it like half natural log of 1 plus x square, right? So this gives you E of natural log root of x square plus 1, which is nothing but root of x square plus 1. So this is the required answer to the question. Option C. Hope you are clear with this. Then let's move to the last question, mathematical question of this question paper. So let's start with it. Let's go. You are given dy by dx is equal to this is tan inverse y upon x is equal to this. Then you have to find out f of e raised to power 3. Okay. So see basically we are starting the question with the differential, right? We have uh, de derivative of y. We need to have the y for this. So if I'm saying y is equal to mx, putting y is equal to mx. This will give you, let's differentiate in both the sides with respect to x, dy by dx will be given by first into derivative of second. So m into derivative of uh, dx, okay, this can be written as one only, m into one plus second function into derivative of first. This dy by dx is this one. So let's write it down. You will have m plus x into dm upon dx is equal to y square upon xy minus y square minus xy. Let's put y is equal to mx over here. So you will have x into dm upon dx is equal to y square is m square x square upon x into 
mx minus m square x square minus x square minus m right so this will become um, first of all i'll take the x square common from the numerator and the denominator and we cancel it you will have m square upon m minus m square minus 1 minus m which on solving will give you m square minus m square plus m cube plus m upon m minus m square minus 1. So, you will have it as m into m square plus 1 upon m minus m square minus 1. This is equal to x into dm upon dx. Hope this is clear till here. So, next, let's, uh, you can write it as, uh, okay, you can say m minus m square minus 1 upon m into m square plus 1 into dm is equal to 1 by x into dx. Hope this is clear till here. Now taking the integral on both the sides. You will have it as okay so now this can be written as integral on both the sides yes. So you can write it as 1 upon m square plus 1 minus 1 upon m dm is equal to natural log of mod of x plus some constant, right? Uh, this is equal to 1 upon integral of 1 upon m square plus 1. This is nothing but tan inverse m, which is y upon x, right? 1 upon m, this is natural log of m, which is y upon x again. This is equal to some natural log x plus c. Hope this is clear till here, right? So, let's take it on this side. You will have it as tan inverse y upon x is equal to natural log of y minus natural log of... Uh, um, wait, I'll just solve it here only first. Minus of this, this is equal to natural log of x plus c tan inverse y upon x minus natural log of y plus natural log of x is equal to natural log of x plus c. They will cancel and you will have tan inverse y upon x is equal to natural log of y plus some constant. So this is equal to c. This is given to you as some fy plus c. That means your fy is that means your fy is nothing but the natural log of y. And what will be f of e raised to power 3? This is what we were asking the question. This will be the natural log of e raised to power 3, which is nothing but 3. So this is the required answer to the problem. Let's check. Option D is the correct answer to this problem. Hope you are clear with this. So students, this completes our AP EAP CET 07 July. 2022 shift to paper. Hope this paper was clear to you and you were thorough with your problems. All your doubts were resolved. If you still have any doubts, you can rewind the video and watch it again. And you can also visit our website www.examsnet.com. You can also download our app. The link is available in the description box. So students, Keep scoring high, keep studying, keep uh, working hard and best of luck for your exams. That's all for this paper. Bye.